Hello and welcome to the news from Bahrain International. I am Hamad Yusuf. His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa departed for the United Kingdom at an invitation by His Majesty King Charles III of the United Kingdom, Great Britain and Northern Ireland, head of the Commonwealth, to attend the coronation ceremony to be held in London. The first Deputy Chairman of the Supreme Council for Youth and Sports, Chairman of the General Sports Authority and President of Bahrain Olympic Committee, His Highness Sheikh Khalid bin Hamad Al Khalifa, attended the final of the Khalid bin Hamad Gold Generation Handball League Cup, which brought together the Barbar and Adair clubs. His Highness expressed pleasure with the technical levels and the development of the competitions of the age groups in the current season, noting that the concerted efforts of all parties contributed to achieving many of the goals of the Khalid bin Hamad League for Gold Generation initiative in its first edition. His Highness congratulated the Barbar Club team for winning the cup and praise the distinguished technical level of Adair, wishing the player success in next edition. His Highness expressed appreciation for the efforts made by the GSA federations and clubs with the aim of achieving the desired goals of the initiative, stressing that the development of the age groups will have a positive impact in the coming years by creating strong and competitive teams capable of making achievements and consolidating the gains of Bahraini sports. His Highness stressed that Bahraini handball is abundant with rising talents, praising the role of the Bahraini Handball Federation and clubs in discovering talents and preparing them to reach the national teams. His Highness wished the sport to continue its success at all levels. The National Health Regulatory Authority has won international recognition by the International Association for Quality and Health Services for the National Accreditation Program for the Standards for Evaluating Hospitals and Health Centers and the Authority. More in this report. A new achievement recorded for the Kingdom of Bahrain, which is the National Health Regulatory Authority's obtaining international recognition by the International Association for Quality in Health Services for the National Accreditation Program and the Standards for Evaluating Hospitals and Health Centers and the Authority, and thus the Kingdom of Bahrain is the second Gulf country to achieve this recognition after the Kingdom of Saudi Arabia. Having achieved the uh, accreditation of the uh, healthcare accreditation standards means that these standards are acknowledged as being developed 
according to stringent principles. They are associated with a, uh, an appropriate measurement system and they address all important issues related to quality and safety based on international evidence. So uh, in this way they are recognized as, a, as meeting an international benchmark for accreditation standards. The NHRA has started implementing national accreditation programs since 2017 as it has established basic standards for the quality of health services that are evaluated in each of the hospitals and medical centers and thus the hospitals and centers that obtain the evaluation are classified according to the percentage of performing and providing services in terms of quality, safety and efficiency and the authority was able to evaluate 93 health institutions since the implementation of the program. So the fact that we got ISQA accreditation, it's actually an international recognition of our standards in accreditation. So this puts Bahrain on the international scenario for accreditation. What has happened is we had standards uh, and we updated them, but we wanted to ensure that they were internationally recognized and the, and the hospitals and medical centers here in Bahrain are working at a level of uh, healthcare that is internationally recognized. So we uh, got our standards accredited by the International Society for Quality in Healthcare um, that have their offices in the Republic of Ireland and in Geneva. Uh, and this gives us a sort of validation of our standards and it gives the facilities in Bahrain uh, enough uh, sort of trust in our standards that these standards have been um, reviewed by outside uh, organization that is established in doing these kind of standards and giving international accreditation to every other accrediting facility as well. According to the World Health Organization, accreditation is one of the best ways to improve the quality of health care provided. The National Accreditation Program for Health Institutions comes within the framework of the Kingdom's keenness to strengthen the system of monitoring health institutions in the Kingdom of Bahrain in accordance with the highest international quality standards. The Minister of Labour, Jamil Ahmeda, met with the Indian Minister of State for External Affairs and Parliamentary Affairs, Sri Muralid Haran. The meeting discussed bilateral ties, boosting cooperation in the labour sector and the exchange of expertise in the workforce training. The Labour Minister briefed the Indian Minister on Bahrain's efforts in aligning national labour laws with international labour organisation standards. He highlighted Bahrain's efforts in providing the optimal environment for emerging companies and sectors and job creation supported by business-friendly laws. He highlighted Bahrain's labour policies that ensure a healthy working environment, high productivity and the protection of labor rights. The Indian minister praised the bilateral ties and the depth of historical relations between the two countries, commending the progress and development of the labor sector in Bahrain. He expressed appreciation for ensuring the well-being of the Indian community in Bahrain, affirming his country's interest in boosting cooperation in all sectors, especially in trade and investment. The Bahrain Tourism and Exhibitions Authority and Emirates Airlines signed an MOU in the final day of Arabian travel market. The MOU was signed by the Minister of Tourism and BTEA President Fatma Sayrafi and Emirates Chief Commercial Officer Adnan Kazim. BTEA and Emirates will explore a range of joint marketing efforts that include tourism promotions and campaigns, organizing trips and other activities. The Minister said that this partnership demonstrates the two countries' commitment to promoting tourism and contributing to the region's economic development. The Minister of Information, Dr. Ramzan al naim commended the royal message of His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa al Khalifa marking World Press Freedom Day, which is observed on May 3rd every year. The Minister said the message clearly reflects His Majesty the King's respect to Bahraini journalists and media figures and their contributions to serving the nation by committing to the noble rules of the profession. He stressed development of Bahrain press thanks to the vision and directors of His Majesty the King that emanate from a strong belief in the role of honest and objective journalism in promoting the democratic march in Bahrain. He noted His Majesty was keen on stressing the key role of Bahrain Press as a partner in supporting the development and democratic march. He pointed out the need to work in achieving the aspirations of His Majesty the King by continuing to foster the Bahraini identity and promote values of patriotism and allegiance to the nation. The minister also underlined the need for the press to honor its national responsibilities by increasing its capability in confronting misinformation and the discourse of hatred in order to preserve gains. He said that His Majesty's emphasis on the significance to reach an international formula to incriminate 
dominates all discourses of hatred as an important initiative that reflects an enlightened royal vision regarding the risks posed by those discourses, which reflects His Majesty's approach and support for all efforts aimed at promoting peace. The minister expressed thanks and gratitude to His Majesty the King for praising the role of the Ministry of Information in promoting the press and media freedom. He pledged to continue the efforts to highlight the civilizational image of the kingdom, preserve the national identity, and back the development efforts. The advisor to His Majesty the King for Media Affairs, Nabil Al Hamar, inaugurated the Bahraini Press Fair organized by Al Ayam Publishing in cooperation with Bahrain Journalists Association, coinciding with World Press Freedom Day. More on this report. The Bahraini Press Fair embodies the great successes of the Bahraini Press's prosperous career, which was launched since the 1930s and resulted in a rich national product in all intellectual, political, and economic fields. The fair includes the first editions of 65 newspapers and magazines published in Bahrain decades ago, in addition to rare editions of magazines. The fair is scheduled to continue until the 10th of May. The development and prosperity of the national press in the Kingdom of Bahrain is an extension of a prosperous march and a long history of hard work to establish an honest and professional press that works with the highest levels of efficiency and integrity in line with all efforts exerted to build the nation. These valuable items that reflect the volume of journalistic and media achievements made by the Bahraini press won the admiration and interest of journalists, writers, media professionals and those interested in cultural affairs in the Kingdom of Bahrain. The Telecommunications Regulatory Authority hosted the 6G Global Summit in conjunction with the activities of the Global Telecommunications Forum. More in this report. The Telecommunications Regulatory Authority organized over the past two days the 6G Global Summit with the participation of many countries to discuss the latest developments in the sixth generation of mobile communication technologies which allows all attendees, directly or remotely, to share knowledge, exchange ideas and collaborate closely to develop this new technology. We're here doing a 6G conference. Why are we doing 6G? Already in Bahrain we've got 100% coverage. We're one of the world's leaders in 5G. All of our people are able to use 5G services and are actually using them well. We need to make sure we're at the leading edge of what's happening in technology, that Bahrain is always at the forefront and we've got world-class infrastructure. This summit's panel discussions and keynote speeches included experts from Bahrain, the UAE, Jordan, Thailand, China, Europe and the United Kingdom, Canada and other countries. Several topics were discussed covering a wide range of topics related to 6G to enhance digital transformation initiatives in all sectors, as well as develop areas of technology such as artificial intelligence. We're trying now to bring the world together to look at what the new standard for mobiles will be. What is 6G? What's going to happen here? What sort of new applications we'll get and how is development doing it? For Bahrain, this is important because it shows we are people who can convene the industry together. We can discuss, we can do it. What's going to happen next? It's going to have discussions at the ITU. We're going to have discussions with other countries. We're going to do research. Hopefully, we'll be able to work with our universities to see if we can get them to collaborate with other universities internationally. The 6G Global Summit was launched in 2022 as a virtual event held remotely and gathers a high-level elite of sector representatives and policy makers from all over the world to explore paths of development and progress towards the year 2030 and study future challenges. Today, the Kingdom of Bahrain is hosting this conference, which confirms its close support for the development of this new technology. The second edition of the Freedom of Religion and Belief Conference concluded with the participation of elite policy and decision makers in the Kingdom of Bahrain and the European Union. More on this report. A new stage in the series of accomplishments made by the King Hamad Global Center for Peaceful Coexistence and This is Bahrain begins with the conclusion of the second edition of the Freedom of Religion and Belief Conference, during which several meetings and joint workshops were held. Over the course of three days, several important topics were discussed with the aim of deepening the common understanding of freedom of religions and beliefs and improving humanitarian cooperation on several levels. We have been overwhelmed by the um, response from over 100 guests from the European countries. We have youth representatives from 25 of the 27 EU countries who have been interacting with the young Bahrainis here who have joined from universities and schools throughout the conference. 
Of course, now it's an annual event. We're also bridging the gap with other events in Europe and Bahrain and online resources. We had an outstanding um, result from our quest to, join, to ask young Bahrainis and uh, EU youth to join the youth working groups. I'm very pleased to announce that um, a one particular project has been adopted. It's the, um, the joint EU-Bahrain youth working groups have adopted the Cyber Peace Programme, which we developed here in Bahrain in 2018. The conference brought together stakeholders and trusted parties and students by forming a bridge for human communication and understanding in a transparent manner to reach the desired goals and convey messages of peace from the kingdom of peace to the world. This is a wonderful forum which has been created by um, King Hamad bin Isa al Khalifa for the coming together of, of different religions and the EU and Bahrain. And we've looked at a range of subjects um, in relation to freedom of religion and belief. We've looked at um, how education uh, can support um, that aim of fostering freedom of religion and belief. The Kingdom of Bahrain has made many humanitarian achievements, including the freedom of religions and beliefs, which reflects Bahrain's true image in every participation to the world as a model of coexistence and peace. The Sunni Waqf Council Chairman Dr. Rashid Al Hajri received Germany based Central Council of Muslims Chairman Ayman Mazik and Secretary General Ambassador Yazidi currently on a visit to Bahrain. The two sides stressed the importance of consolidating bilateral relations and expanding joint cooperation. The Central Council of Muslims in Germany praised the wise approach of His Majesty the King to instill peace and humanitarian values. They also commended the role of the Sunni Waqf Council in promoting peace, amity, and mutual respect.